hands out. We must surrender to him. But Hannah, in the scripture, was very disappointed and discouraged. And here's the deal. It's, it's hard to come to God hands up when you're discouraged. I mean, you want to come hands out. You want to just say what you need and leave it at that. But Hannah understood that, that it, was, it was ultimately about God's purpose and will for her. And this was a serious struggle. Look at verse 10 and 11 and, and just be reminded. Man, she was in anguish, right? He used the words, she wept in anguish. This was serious. This was a serious struggle. And then it was a long-term struggle. Look at back at verse 7. We didn't read verse 7 a moment ago. It says, so it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord. Year by year. This was an ongoing problem. This was not something she just prayed about for a week or two, right? This is not some struggle she just had for a month or a year. We are so impatient on God in our culture. And we may pray for a week or a month, and we give up, and we just say, well, God didn't answer that prayer. You know, God didn't work. God didn't move. But here's the deal. If we believe Romans 8, God is continually working. There is never a moment when God's not working in your life. Never. There's never a moment when God is not actively working in your life. And so as He's working all things out for your good, even when it doesn't feel good, even when it feels terrible, even when the struggle is present and the pain is real, man, God is working. God is active. And so this was a long-term struggle. Year after year, she struggled with this problem. But we've got to understand, we can approach these circumstances like Hannah did one of two ways. Either we can approach them as obstacles to our happiness, or we can approach them as opportunities for God to work. And man, you could apply that in any area of your life. I want to say it again. Listen, in whatever struggle it is, I mean, there could, you just think of what your biggest problem is in life right now. Whatever it is. It may be that, that kid, it may be that job, it may be that whatever, you know, your marriage. I don't, whatever it is, all right, or, or, or your parents, who knows. Uh, whatever that struggle is, whatever that problem that just seems to be day by day, week by week, month by month, maybe year by year, an ongoing struggle, maybe something you're trying to overcome in the way of temptation. Here's the deal. You can look at that struggle as an obstacle to your happiness, but that would be a very self-centered, self-absorbed approach. But here's the deal. That's how we usually do it. We usually approach our problems as obstacles to our happiness. That will not bring glory to God. That won't. And, and, and honestly, it, you, even when we throw kind of a pity party for ourselves and we feel sorry for ourselves, we all do it. So I'm not beating you up. I'm talking to myself. When we do that, it makes us feel better to make it about us. But man, God does not gain glory in that. So here's what we have to do. Hannah teaches us that we have to look at it not as an obstacle to our happiness, but we have to look at it as an opportunity for God to work in our lives. And, and, and again, there's no way we could ever experience healing without sickness, right? No way. You, you could never experience the healing of God unless you were sick. And sometimes we look at the bad things and we think, why did God allow me to be sick? But see, if it's about us, then that's pity part. That's terrible. But if we look at it from, from God's perspective and the whole purpose for our being here is God, not us, then we can understand this is not an obstacle to my happiness. This is an opportunity for God to invade my life and to work in such a way that everybody around me knows that he is in my business and he's working. That's a huge difference in the way we approach the circumstance. So stop looking at things as obstacles to your happiness. Start looking at it from God's perspective with, with a Christ-centered approach and saying, man, I, I, I want to I look at this as an opportunity for God to shine and, and gain glory in my life. That's a major difference. So, so is your circumstance an obstacle to your happiness or an opportunity for God to work? I think it's a great question to ask yourself. 